I'm Isabel Stainsby and I'm reading from Emperor in Exile by Czech science fiction author Jan Kotoc. All human rulers in the new protectorate were required to undergo the same ceremony that made them chosen, receiving the symbiont of protector DNA. Some people were even banned from becoming chosen because the risk of them dying during or after the ceremony simply could not be taken. But everyone who went through the ritual understood that he or she was chosen. A special room aboard the Dominance was allocated for this purpose. Wissian realised that Baris Sandy must like it. The capsules containing the symbiont stood on a pedestal resembling an altar. Wissian stood on one side and Sandy on the other. The entire hall resembled the site of the dark ritual. A handful of other chosen who served aboard the Dominance and the Reckoning were also present, otherwise nobody. This ritual was prescribed for others. Wissian looked Baron Samadhi right in the eye. Kalingra's ruler looked rather curious, but it was evident that he realised the significance of the ceremony. The protectors brought us out of the darkness, recited Wissian from the ancient text. They brought us into the light. Their gates opened up the universe to us. Their wisdom established order in that universe. Their foresight created civilization. Their bodies give that foresight to those who are worthy and courageous. To those who are unafraid to risk death, Baron Samdi, receive the protector's body. Receive your fate as chosen. Somewhat reluctantly, Samdi took the lump, which resembled a meatball well past its by date. Swallow this and join the chosen. Samdi took several deep breaths. His bravado was gone. Finally, he swallowed it. A few minutes later, he began to tremble and fell to the ground. This was a normal, ordinary reaction to the symbiont. Every chosen had a fever for a few days. The symbiont grew through the organism like a very fast tumour. It attached itself to the nervous system and strengthened it, and everything happened so quickly that it went against nature. Samdi mostly understood nothing. He lay in the cabin assigned to him, tossing and turning with the fever, and three of his slave girls took turns caring for him. The maddening pain made way for a coma. His cries gave way to the reassuring embrace of unconsciousness. He didn't know how long he lay there, how long the girls laid cold compresses on his face, washed him, brought him a bowl. He lost all concept of time. His awakening came out of the blue. It was not like waking up slowly or numb feet gradually coming back to life. It came fast as lightning. Suddenly he felt as if the entire universe had opened up to him. He saw it. He heard it. He felt it. He felt the vibrations around him. He felt the pulsating nervous systems in the bodies of the three girls. He felt the hundreds of souls aboard the ship. He was aware of their presence. This was no gradual learning of abilities. Quite simply, he could suddenly do everything. He sat up so sharply that one of the girls screamed. Baron Sandy, whispered another cautiously. He felt the anxiety rising up within her. It didn't matter. Nothing mattered. The entire universe lay at his feet. He felt it. He looked at the girl standing closest to him. She recoiled by one step, but suddenly could not move. He felt her. He was in her head, his mind holding hers as if in a clamp. He knew everything about her. She believed that her last moment had arrived and only shrieked. The remaining two girls had run away somewhere, but he paid no attention, looking at the one he held, the first being whose mind he had penetrated. She came from the colony of Marlow, and had gone to high school in the city of Port Klein when the fleet had attacked it. Her name was Joanna Tilla, but her parents called her Jackie. Two months ago she had celebrated her 19th birthday, but had told nobody. Slaves did not celebrate, so she had done it in secret. Before being forced into slavery, she had wanted to go to Barondo to work and earn enough in the casinos to study on Hogan. Samdi read all this from her within a few seconds. She was like an open book, but his blood pressure was too great. Blood flowed from her eyes, ears and nose. She trembled in spasms and stopped screaming. He pressed for the last time, and the girl's lifeless body collapsed onto the floor. Prince Kurt Wissian smiled again under his mask. 
Welcome among the chosen, Ramsand. Or should I say Prince 